You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and this fall we have the Meet the Candidates Special Edition of Greater Brockton. I have with me City Councilor at Large Moses Rodriguez. Moses, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, you for having me, you, man. You used to the studio on the I'm other right, well, end not, of the camera? Well, not so much on this one. Uh, more towards the A than the B side. Yeah, exactly. But, but uh, another election every two years, running for re-election. Um, one of your counselors departed. Shana Barnes isn't running again. There's three counselors that are incumbents, yourself being one of them. You got, uh, there's eight in the race. There's no preliminary election. So why should you be returned to office? Well, Mark, uh, one of the first things that I wanted to do when I joined this council is to make a difference in the city and to be a voice for those that have no voice, uh, to be uh, someone who basically uh, looks at the city of Brockton and and seriously calls it his home. I, um, as you know, I came to this country as a teenager, uh, speaking absolutely no English. I uh, went to Brockton High School and uh, was fortunate enough to to pick up the language, pick up the culture, uh, join the military, uh, and came back to Brockton. In, in terms of, well, I say came back to Brockton because I had the opportunity to get out of Brockton. Right. You know, but I came back to Brockton. I made the, I made the city my own home. It was my parents' home, mm -hmm. but I made it my own home where I had my, my children. The children that actually went to Brockton High, graduated from Brockton High, are doing very well themselves. Um, and, and that's the reason why I joined the, um, the council. Because a lot of us sometimes, we see the issues in the community, but yet we're afraid of taking the step to do something about it. And I'm, I'm one of these individuals that believe, you know, if you see a problem and you see, you, know, you notice that it's a problem and you want to do something about the problem, then you do something about the problem. Right. And that's why I did what I did. Well, a lot of people running for office nowadays, whether it be here or nationally or, or statewide, don't really have experience before they get elected. Before you got elected, you did a few things. You helped out, you know, obviously majorly with the Cape Verdean Association, mm -hmm. okay? President, executive director, all that. You worked in Mayor Harrington's administration um, for four, four years? Yes. Okay. And over at Brockton Hospital, I yes. mean, Chief of Interpreter Services. I mean, obviously, picking up English, you had other language skills. But my knowledge of you, just from being a past board member here, being a colleague and a friend, um, very involved in the community. You're the guy that when something bad happens, in the Cape Verdean community, but not just the Cape Verdean community. Cape Verde, yeah. You're at the funerals, you're at the wakes, you're out there, you're out on the street. So it's, 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 you know, talk the talk, walk the walk, all of that stuff. But you did make it your home. You're like me, you came, chose to come back here. Correct. Chose Correct. to come back here and, and help out. So being on that side of the, the table, um, what are the issues that you see coming up in the next two years? One big one that's being discussed right now is desal, okay? and also throwing out on the table other options like MWRA. What are your thoughts on that? Mark, believe it or not, I am actually for purchasing the desal plant. Okay. Uh, but when I say purchasing the desal plant, there's a big but associated with it. Right. I believe that the city should have uh, as many resources as possible, meaning you know, if there's a, a factory that's wor you know, worth having in a community, if there's a, um, uh, some sort of an or, uh, a new um, amphitheater, uh, something a complex that needs to be put somewhere. I'd prefer to have it in our in our city, sure. Because I somehow, I mean, you don't have to be a super genius to figure out that it it, it basically glorifies the community a bit mm -hmm. and brings more positive attention to the community. Uh, the reason why I am for purchasing the desal is that I actually see it making money for the community mm -hmm. at the same time becoming a resource for the community but here comes the big but again but nowhere near the 78 million dollars being proposed mm -hmm. you know if if and there's a big if if we can say let's say we purchase the plant for about 25 to 30 million dollars if you purchase it for 35 to 20 uh, uh, 25 to 30 million dollars you, you figure your payments on that bond would be around two and a half to three million dollars. It costs you another million or so to run it. 
you are way under what we're paying um, a carrier right now. Mm -hmm. And we're producing water where we can actually become a water resource authority in our own. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not exactly sure hooking up to the MWRA is, the, is a valuable or, or, or is, is an option yeah. because I think we have some sort of an issue with Aquaria to begin with in terms of a contract, mm -hmm. you know? And someone who actually served in the military, I believe that, you know what, our word means something. Mm -hmm. We signed a contract, you know, we gotta live by that contract. You know, if we could get out of the contract legally, sure, I'm for, I'm for getting out of the contract. But I'm not sure, based on all the conversations that I've had with people, that we're actually able to get out of that contract legally. I mean, we can break it and then go to court and take our chances in court, but that's not exactly, I think, an option that the city should actually take right now with all the other legal issues we got going on in the city. Mm -hmm. So if we could actually purchase the plant at a reasonable cost and then turn around and make it our own and run it as our own, we could sell water to our local communities, whereas Aquaria can't do that as it stands. Mm -hmm. So we could become, I mean, think about it, we're the largest city south of Boston, we're the, the only city in Plymouth County. We have an opportunity to come up and become a water resource authority, like we have the sewer, we can, we can become a water resource authority where these other smaller communities can now hook up to Brockton and, and we're, sell, no, we're selling them water now. We would be selling them water and making a positive revenue for the community. So unless um, somebody else comes up with a bigger and better plan, I think that plan actually works a little bit better. So what do Not you at $78 million, because $78 million makes zero sense. Yeah, so big, big, number, to, big number to crack. So you're out there, you know, signs are going up, campaign kickoff, um, even though now we don't go, we go till November, okay? What are you hearing from your constituents? You're, you're out all the time. You just had the big Cape Verdean Festival. I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of political activity that happens at that event yeah. every year. What are you hearing from the people in Brockton? What are their issues? Have they changed? I know we're not sitting here talking about the power plant like we were the last couple of Thank elections. God, yeah. Even though it's still someplace. Yeah. We don't quite know, but is it public safety? Is it schools? Schools looks like Brockton's going to join. You, you just told me you were away. Brockton is probably going to reinstitute that lawsuit again, the education funding lawsuit. So what issues are you hearing? Well, the biggest, one, one of the biggest issues um, is, and it has been for the last uh, few years, is public safety. Mm -hmm. Or at least the perception of crime that exists in our community. Because it's not just the crime that actually takes place, but it's also the perception of crime. Uh, when you, uh, you, you talk to people, I was in D.C. Uh, in the beginning of July, and you're talking to people, uh, I met a city councilor in D.C., who uh, I said something about Brockton, Massachusetts, and, and he's like, oh, you guys have some problems up there. Mm -hmm. And this is D.C., the right. crime capital of the, right. D.C. is the capital, Chicago. but also the, the crime capital of the country. Mm -hmm. But that's the perception that exists out there. You know, so when you basically have a conversation and all people say is this is what I read in the paper, this is what I saw in the news, because what gets reported is what happens in a city in the middle of tiny little communities, right. which is, you know, the shootings that take place. If we were, let's say if we lived next to Boston, mm -hmm. we're attached to, Bo let's say we were Cambridge or Somerville, right. and the issues that happened in Brockton, it wouldn't even make the paper. Right. You know, because Boston takes away all the issues. We are the mini Boston on the, in the, on the uh, South Shore. So whatever happens in our community gets uh, glamorized in a sense by the newspaper, it gets magnified by our newspaper here in the community, which what people doesn't, don't, don't quite understand and realize is that, guess what? The newspaper is now worldwide papers because of the internet. Right. So people all over the place read the same issues that are being printed in our newspaper, and they don't see the good that actually happens in our community. Right. So this perception of crime, yes, we do have crime in our community. You know, I don't have to tell you that because you know that. Right. You know, and everybody knows that. But I don't think it's as bad as what gets reported in the community. And you, when you look at, let's go back to the Cape Verdean Festival that we just did not too long ago. When you look at the thousands of people standing in one place shoulder to shoulder, supposedly from the v real violent community that the Cape Verdean community is known for in this community, what happened in that event? 
absolutely nothing. No, and I remember when it was at City Hall Plaza and there were, you couldn't even, you couldn't move. Correct. Every year. How, it's, what is it, 23? 20, 30 years. 23 years. Yeah. You haven't had one incident not in one 23 issue. years. Not one issue. Not one issue, not one arrest. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying just issues, but not even one arrest. Right. You know, when you look at, we have about six police officers from the community working at this event, and all the people coming together to Brockton for that event, and not a single issue. That, nobody read that in the paper anywhere. No, the good news is not out You know, and thank God BCA was there to cover it, and I, I saw it replayed several times, and, you know, thank God we have that element in the community, because if it wasn't for that element, right. guess what? The positive within our own community would just go silent. And, and to me, the issue in the community is that. We talked about the schools. You know how we all feel about our schools. I'm a product of Brockton Public Schools. Me and too, so and are you. your kids and my kids. And your kids and yeah. my kids. So we know how much we love our schools. But as I said to the superintendent several times, it's time to stop these little games in terms of sitting back, waiting for a little chump change coming back in our direction and take the, the, the step and the step that I think the state actually respects is the steps to the courthouse. Mm -hmm. You know, take them to court again, demand what needs to be uh, what's ours. You know, I, I say this often. Uh, people say, oh, the state isn't giving us anything. The state isn't giving us anything. The state isn't giving us anything. It's ours. Right. You know, we're the largest community south of Boston. Therefore, we're the largest taxpayers south of Boston. So whatever we're getting, is not some welfare check from the state. It's ours. Right. The taxes that we're paying into the Commonwealth that needs to come back. Look what we get from the lottery. I was you just going to say that. You beat me to that. That's, you know, a, look that's a lot of money. Yeah, look what we're getting from the lottery. We are one of the largest communities that invest in the lottery. Are we getting the largest no. chunk of change from that particular thing? No. no but you know, one of, the, one of the issues that I've always said in our city government we are always sitting back waiting for another community to do something. Oh, Stoughton did this, so let's try this. Oh, look, Avon just did this, let's do this, because Avon did, oh, Whitman just did this, so let's do that because Whitman did this. When in fact, we're the city. Cities are supposed to lead, and we need to start leading, not just sitting back waiting for things to happen on our behalf, but to take the necessary steps to force things to happen for us. I know you and I could talk for half an hour. I got the one minute. Oh, so you get about 30 seconds to tell them <laughs> website, phone number, how to get involved and why they should reelect you. Forget I'm here. Look at the camera. Well, I just want to tell everybody in our, in our community that um, although I happen to be Cape Verdean and very proud of the fact that I'm Cape Verdean, but I'm Brocktonian first. You know, and I want everybody to know that Brockton is my community. Brockton is my city. And when I defend Brockton, I don't defend it for one ethnic group versus another. I defend it because it's my hometown. It's the hometown of my children. And this November, I believe that our council has done a great deal of work, positive work. And I think it's important for us to be returned back to the city council because there's a few things that we need to, to do, need to push forward in the city council. And for that, I count on your vote on November. Thanks, Moses, for coming in. We'll have you back. We'll get you all together, and we'll cover the election. Thank you, sir. Okay. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more coverage of the preliminary election and the final election in November. But most of all, do your civic duty. Educate yourself about the candidates and vote. Thanks for joining us.